Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It is an absolutely nasty midwinter day. I mean, th this is a, an absolute slit your wrist, uh, pop the fentanyl, climb all the UFO kind of winter day here in October, an absolutely miserably depressing day. And guys, uh, if this little dog really had gotten eaten by a coyote yesterday and was not uh, taking a nap under the fucking bed here in the tiny house while uh, I and half the planet were on a meltdown panic, Yes, in the log, hanging out under the bed, taking a nap. I honestly believe I would be uh, taking myself out today, uh, <laughs> try, trying to face one day of this shit, guys. It, it, it's, it, it's taking everything I have and just looking at the weather forecast for the middle of this week where we're talking a high of 73, I believe, on Wednesday, and I'm getting the fuck out of here. One week from tomorrow, one more week uh, in Bugs in a Jar Farm before heading south. So uh, I'm just sitting here banging my head against the wall, uh, you know, trying to stay an inch in front of the Grim Reaper. So, uh, Went over to Vegematic's channel as I do uh, every weekend. You know, Veg, he does his videos on Saturday, and so I usually check in with him on Sunday. And on one hand, I was happy to see that Veg uh, was not doing one of his morose, depressed, collapsitarian whines, but instead was just telling a humorous story from his past, uh, which is a very good story. If you haven't heard Veg's video, uh, you, you need to go about him uh, talking about his most embarrassing moment in his life. His most embarrassing moment in his life. I'm not going to do the spoiler alert because you can just go listen to it yourself. But it quickly became apparent as I was listening to Veg's story that I had already heard the story. He, he had told the very same story, uh, it seems like, within the past year, certainly within the past two years. And I'm, and I'm wondering to myself, well, dude, do you realize that you're telling the same story you've already told. Well, I, I've got no room to talk, guys. I mean, good God, I've got no fucking room to talk. That's what I was doing last night while Veg was telling some story he'd already told. Uh, I, I was over here telling some goddamn story about being abducted by space aliens for 22 years, uh, which, which I've told fucking good God how many times uh, making you guys sick of hearing that. So, I got no room to talk uh, about just telling crazy ham bone stories. Uh, I, I, you know what I'm saying, but, but at least I can defend my old codger self that, that I do seven times as many videos as Veg does. So, see what I'm saying? Uh, he and I are the same age, but... I have to come up with seven, probably seven to ten times as many videos or stories as he does. So anyway, I just, so I honestly don't know if, if, if Veg even remembered telling the thing. So I, I told him, uh, yeah, I left a comment saying, dude, are, are, are we just becoming these, you know, befuddled old men repeating 
these stories and, and thank God neither Veg nor I were in the army. Could you imagine uh, me sitting around telling old war stories? Uh, there is nothing that uh, is more boring than some uh, drooling old fart telling his old war stories. Well, there is one thing more boring and that's people <clears throat> talking about their fucking children or their fucking grandchildren. Uh, it, it, you know, I, I will sit there and endure a, a goddamn story from one of my friends, which is now talking about their adorable grandchildren and all this. I, 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 I will sit there and tolerate that shit. Uh, maybe once, but, but, but goddamn, some drooling old fart telling the same fucking story uh, uh, about their goddamn planet-nibbling, clueless uh, fucking moron little grandchildren. I don't fucking want to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it. The only reason that, that anybody tolerates stories about your fucking grandchildren is uh, because they want to tell their story about their fucking grandchildren. And it's their ticket to admission, as it were. So at least you will never hear me or Vegematic uh, tell a humorous story about their fucking planet nibbling little grandchildren. So we do have that. So, uh, so anyway, as I told Veg, you know, because I did the last time he did this story, <clears throat> uh, I did a response video where I told kind of my version of his story. And, and I remember him saying something like, God damn you, Hambone, you always have to outdo me. So uh, as I told Veg, uh, I will somehow refrain from from uh, telling that story again, unless, what did I say, if three people, if three people uh, have not heard me tell the story, it involves a golf course. Uh, I think it's the only story I have ever told about a golf course because I generally avoid golf courses. So, if, if, uh, if you've never heard the golf course story, or for whatever reason you want to hear it again, I need three people to say, Hambone, we need to hear the golf story for the first or second or third time. Anyway, I think I've only told it once. But anyway, while I was thinking about that, so Veg was, uh, you know, asking for people in the comments to share their most embarrassing moment of their lives. Well, as I told them, there's too goddamn many to choose from. You know, obviously with a mouth like mine, uh, I, I am continually embarrassing myself and sticking my foot in it. So this is just a story that happened when I was in Mexico last year. And, and I meant to tell this story, and I honestly cannot remember, guys, whether I have told this story or not. So if I'm halfway through this story and, and you've heard it, just, uh, you know, assume that I am a borderline uh, Alzheimer's victim that I am turning in to one of these pathetic, drooling old farts who can't even remember telling his stories. But uh, I, I, I am sure that none of you remember when I, uh, when my buddy and I uh, were traveling and we went to Belize. We left Mexico, this was in February of last year, so we left Mexico and headed into Belize. And the first night in Belize, we went to this very popular uh, clueless moron Turon, Love that word, Turon, you know, a tourist moron, a uh, place called Key Calker, uh, off the coast, a little island off the coast of Belize. Never, I had never been there in all of my travels 
So I said, uh, as miserable as it sounds, I want to go spend one night in, in, in goddamn Key Calker uh, just to, just so I can scratch it off my bucket list. So, of course, like, talking about Turons, <clears throat> uh, my buddy and I did not make advanced hotel reservations before we went over there. We just thought we would wing it. So we get over there, and needless to say, there is no rooms available on the fucking island, you know, for less than like $500 a night. That, that every goddamn uh, hotel room, uh, you know, like under 500 fucking dollars had been long gone. We got laughed out of about a dozen places, and I finally just, just said, fuck it, you sit here, I'm gonna go find a place. So I, I tracked down a room in this place, and I'm pretty sure that video is still up there. Uh, if you, if, if you plug in Key Calker or whatever, I will try to remember to put the link onto it, but I always forget. So anyway, we found this horrible room, and the room wasn't so bad. It was just the neighborhood and the view from the window, uh, this, you know, of the power lines in this, some sort of industrial park or power station or something, a totally horrible place, but, you know, it was what it was, I think we spent like 75, 80 bucks for this shithole room, it was just going to be for a night, <clears throat> so we get the room, and uh, this is where, I don't know, I can't imagine any of you I uh, remember where I yanked down a video last year. Uh, I yanked down the video, and, and this is the finally the reason why Hambone. What? Why did Hambone yank down this video? Uh, so we get up the next morning, and we're checking out. And the desk clerk comes up with some fucking bullshit about a missing wash rag. A, a, a fucking missing wash rag. Because when I checked into this hotel, I got this extremely bizarre thing that they made me sign before we would, b before we, uh, they would rent us the room, I had to sign basically an open credit card over to them. Uh, that if my buddy and I damaged or stole something out of that room, that they could go in there and charge my credit card what they thought was the appropriate value that I agreed in writing that they had the right to charge my credit card if they determined that my buddy and I, uh, who is a 67-year-old retired nuclear physicist, he, you know, got drunk and rowdy, I guess, and brought a couple of hookers up there or something, that if we damaged or stole something, that they were going to charge my credit card. So I go to close out my credit card, and the guy at the, and the, guy at the front desk announces to me that uh, there was a missing wash rag, implying that my buddy or I had stolen their fucking wash rag. And this set off an absolute fucking pandemonium in that, in, in, in that fucking hotel. I mean, this was the crime 
of the century that uh, that these two men, these arrogant fucking gringos, had come down there and stolen one of their wash rags. And I mean, my fucking God. Uh, I, I had the goddamn manager of the fucking hotel in there. We had the entire fucking cleaning crew uh, in, in, in there. We, we have the entire fucking cleaning crew up in the room. I went up there. I was in a fucking rage screaming at these motherfuckers in, 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 in two fucking languages about their fucking wash rag. And, and I mean, the, the, these women, uh, they're, they're fucking ripping the sheets off the bed. They're, they're shaking the fucking sheets off the bed. They're, they're shaking out the dirty towels. They're opening up at all the fucking drawers. They're, they're peeking my, I mean, my God. This was the biggest excitement in this fucking hotel in five years, and, and I was fucking going off uh, at, at these motherfuckers uh, in two different languages down there in the hotel lobby. Uh, the, the desk clerk was getting more and more fucking pissed off, and he basically suggested if uh, my buddy and I uh, did not shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of there that they were calling the cops on us over this fucking wash rag. And so, uh, he, you know, he, said, he kept saying, uh, Sir, it's no big deal. Uh, we will just uh, add the charge of the wash rag to your credit card bill. And uh, I, I said, like hell you will. Uh, I said, I want to pay for that motherfucking wash rag. Uh, where I'm going to buy that motherfucking wash rag in cash. And we're going to close out this goddamn credit card bill. And of course, I was threatening to uh, turn them in to the Belize Tourism Authority and, and, and all of this shit. And, and, and I, I, I said, how much do I owe you for that fucking wash rag? He said, give me three dollars. Give me three fucking dollars for a 59 cent Walmart wash rag. And I pulled three fucking dollars out of my pocket. And I said, here's your three goddamn dollars, you motherfucker. Uh, you, you goddamn scammer. And, and, and I said, uh, we're going to close out this motherfucking credit card bill right now. Uh, before you put some 500 fucking a uh, dollar charge on here. Uh, I, I don't know for ripping a fucking pillowcase. And so anyway, they closed out my uh, my credit card account, and I got a receipt for the fucking three dollars on, on, on this motherfucking uh, scam on, on the goddamn wash rag. And uh, so we. Uh, we leave the hotel uh, among much shouting and cursing and, and, and bird flipping on, on both sides of the thing, uh, uh, of the hotel door. We go storming off uh, down to the dock to wait to meet our, our boat uh, over to the mainland. And, and I did one of my classic uh, rants. It was a good rant. Uh, on the dock, uh, sitting there on the fucking dock at Key Calker <coughs> to the amusement of the people gathering for the bus, I did a full-fledged hambone, uh, self-righteous hambone rant uh, uh, about this fucking wash rag, naming the hotel... Uh, about what a bunch of fucking scammers they were. Don't ever stay at this fucking place. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the boat gets there. I wrap up my rant. And uh, so, and, and I actually, that's right. So I, I 
did the rant and, and I published it on to Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So it was, I had the rant live on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So anyway, my buddy and I, we throw our luggage uh, in, into the boat and uh, head over to the mainland and we, and we finally get to our hotel room for the, you know, the next night on the mainland and I go into the room and I set my suitcase down on the bed and I open up my suitcase. What the fuck do you think is lying right there on top of my clothes? <laughs> it's that fucking wash rag that I had never seen in my entire fucking life. It was still folded, you know, how they, they fold the wash rags into these pretty little things looking like a flower or some bullshit. The, the fucking thing, uh, I had never touched the thing. And the fucking wash rag was on my luggage and I called my buddy in there and I said, dude, you got to come in here and see this. And uh, he, he comes in there and, and sees that fucking wash rag sitting there uh, <laughs> on top of my clothes. And uh, I guess the, the uh, so it's not exactly embarrassing because uh, they had already gotten their fucking three dollars. But I, I was just very glad that I did not in a fit of indignation when they were, uh, you know, uh, basically insinuating that I was a thief stealing their fucking wash rag, that I did not open the fucking suitcase in, in, in front of those people at the hotel because uh, I have to admit that would have been uh, somewhere uh, on the list. So at least I got a break from that and... Uh, got away with my $3 wash rag, which I left uh, at that hotel room. Anyway, you know, it just goes to show when you're, when you're so goddamn, it's, it's like I was 99% sure that this dog had been eaten by a fucking coyote yesterday. There was no I, 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 I mean, there was no fucking explanation uh, of where the fucking dog was. Uh, I had already put the video out. I was already emailing and calling people who knew Sancho and telling them that Sancho had been eaten by a fucking coyote. Uh, that if I hadn't found him by dark... I consider Sancho Panza R.I.P. Uh, you know, when, when you're so goddamn certain of something uh, and, and, and then you get your comeuppance, uh, <laughs> it does, it should do a better job of, of uh, putting the, these arrogant prick know-it-alls, uh, you know, to get them to back off a little bit. But I found that these, the, it, we all know the type of people who, who know more about any subject on the planet uh, than, you know, the world's biggest experts on the planet. I don't care what it is. Uh, whether it's alien abduction, people who have never been abducted by space aliens know a hell of a lot more about it than people who have. Uh, I'm dealing with this fellow, I might do this, about the, uh, the what do you call it, global dimming, the aerosol masking effect. Uh, the, the, these people uh, who act like you know, they are the experts. 
and, and they're spouting uh, this unadulterated horseshit that with 30 seconds uh, of uh, re 30 seconds of research, you can uh, prove uh, that the shit coming out of their mouth is unadulterated horseshit. But it doesn't seem to stop them. And I am probably one of these people, you know, since I am the, the smartest person in, you know, on the planet, I, you know, I can understand uh, how it feels. You know, it's a big burden to carry, knowing that you're the smartest and the funniest person on planet Earth. Uh, but it is a, you know, it's just a, a cross that we have to bear. And, uh, so anyway, I am sitting here killing time so I don't kill myself. Uh, when I called my sister about Sancho, the first question out of her mouth, uh, was not about Sancho. My sister said, do you or your housemate own a gun, Is was her first question. I thought she was suggesting that I was going to shoot the coyote that ate Sancho Panza. It took me a second to understand what she was talking about, but... uh I really am, I, I, after this episode, getting the fentanyl. Uh, I've, I've, I've had enough of this, and, and it will probably be a funny video, for, because for being the smartest person on the planet, I have no more clue how to get my hands on fentanyl. I, 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 no clue. Someone could offer me one hundred thousand dollars to go out and get get them some fentanyl, and uh, I am completely fucking clueless. But that's fixing to change. But I want to do that down in Florida, so uh, I will keep you posted when I finally, when Hambone finally finds his fentanyl. And we will see where that story goes. But anyway, if you haven't heard Veg's most embarrassing moment the first time he told it, uh, go over to Vegematic's channel and listen to that to brighten your day. And uh, let me know if you want to hear Hambone trying to top that story for the second time. And now... It's time for your chicken. Are you ready to go eat some Walmart chicken? Bye, guys. Well, how do you turn the fucking thing off?